Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 episode review. This is going to be the episode review for um, 112, episode 12 of season 1. The episode is titled, It Came From The Death. Before that, I'll just a brief kind of channel update now that I'm kind of on camera for this one. Um, the reason um, uh, I haven't been putting out like a lot of videos basically is because I've been just pretty busy with like stuff on the site, organizing a lot of stuff on them, Avatar The Last Airbender Online.com, Christmas events and so on, a lot of just kind of time <laughs> working on that stuff, trivia and so on. Uh, so stuff like papercraft videos and maybe some of those other type of videos are going to be kind of basically, they'll come back in the new year uh, once kind of all Christmas whole new year stuff is over. But for now, I'm kind of going to be keeping coming out with these um, turtle reviews and Avatar news whenever it comes out. That, that'll be the kind of videos I'll be doing for the rest of the year, pretty much. And maybe I'll do a Christmas video as well, as well with that. So um, that's just a quick update on like what's going on here. Um, but anyway, episode 12. I really did love this episode. And when I first watched it, I was kind of like, uh, that was good. Uh, uh, and I was just like... But I felt there was something missing. But when I watched it again and kind of like knew what was coming and saw little kind of connections and stuff like that, I really did um, like the episode a lot more on my second watch of it. And I think the main thing that stood out to me in that second rewatch was just that um, the whole Leatherhead and Michelangelo um, friendship just really kind of took the episode to like another level when you really kind of got into that. And I liked how it kind of developed throughout the whole episode with them. Um, him being the only one to um, really give Leatherhead a chance, like the only one not to judge him by his looks and kind of attitude at the beginning. But anyway, I'll start off with um, the first topic as just Leatherhead himself. He's obviously is the main character, basically the um, character the title refers to. It came from the depth, obviously Leatherhead. Uh, Leatherhead obviously is a uh, established Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character. Uh, I really have no idea if he was in the original show because I'm not that big of a fan of the original show. But in 2003 show, I did like kind of where they went with him. They maybe made him a bit too kind of intelligent, smart like Donatello. But um, in here, I really like what they've done with him. Uh, they've kind of kept the whole anger control issue caused by someone else. And I like that because... Um, it really works with the way they contrasted uh, Mikey as the most mellow of the turtles and the one kind of like least likely to get angry with probably the angriest character that we've seen in the show. So that really worked the way that uh, Mikey instantly befriended uh, Leatherhead because um, he has like I suppose the most compassion, the least kind of judge people by their um, looks and stuff like that. And, uh, that was uh, really interesting uh, and then Leatherhead's backstory, as it's explained kind of near the end of the episode, was also really interesting in that we get to see more of those um, kind of uh, comic book style, I suppose, flashbacks with the interesting art and stuff like that. That was really interesting in that the Krang were the ones who mutated him in Dimension X and they basically gave him that kind of personality flaw of having kind of basically the switch when he gets angry he kind of becomes this beast but before that he's quite like intelligent and kind of laid back that's very interesting and um, again he's another mutant that is just from an animal like kind of like the turtles as opposed to being a human mutated with an animal so that's uh, another in interesting thing for Leatherhead and I think for me with Leatherhead um, how much I like him will depend on where they go with him like uh, is he going to become like a basically a recurring character from now on is are we just going to see him for maybe this and next episode and not then not see him for a while or what so i'm very interested to see where they go with him it seems like he's at least coming back for the next episode based on how it ends but i'm not really sure about that which uh, that's probably like like the weirdest part of this episode and that it, they, they kind of set it up like it was the first part of a two-parter but I'm not even sure if the next episode is a second part of it. Um, it's kind of weird. The next episode is called I Monster, I think. Uh, so it kind of, sort of, seems like it's uh, going to be like part two to this. But anyway, I'll kind of continue on. I like Leatherhead. Michelangelo was the turtle kind of in the most focus in this episode. And I really liked what they did here. They continued the whole thing of... Um, 
Mikey's main stories when they focus on him being about him getting more friends and that like the thing with Chris Bradford didn't work out. This one appeared to be going that way but in the end Mikey was right. That Leatherhead does actually have some kind of good to him that his brothers didn't see and I even like the way that like Splinter made a point of pointing out that Michelangelo was correct and stuff like that. And then sort of like <laughs> it's like, yeah, I never thought I'd say it myself. And oh, that was really good and then, like he finally had this kind of moment where he was the one who was correct. Uh, that was cool. And uh the way Mikey was kinda like, yeah, taking off Splinter and he's like, The enemy of my enemy is my bro. <laughs> That's not quite what I said. I love that line, um, and stuff like that. Mikey was had the most compassion and in the end was to kind of use the wisdom that Splinter taught them the most. It was cool. Um so yeah, I liked the way that Mikey went through the whole episode. He was the only one able to calm Leatherhead down. He's the one who had the connection with Leatherhead. Leatherhead um, even said that like Michelangelo was wise for the whole not judging people by the way he looks or like acts and stuff like that. That was cool. Uh, Donnie, I suppose, had the worst day ever in this episode. And they really went with the recurring joke of him getting hurt in some way, basically being abused by people getting his head grabbed by Leatherhead and then Raphael kind of smashing him into the water, him being the one to like test everything out for danger. That was kind of like the Donnie like, oh poor Donnie episode. So that, that, that was cool the way they didn't just basically make Mikey the focus of the episode and ignore the other turtles. We even got like the side plot with the Donnie, my, uh, Leo and uh, Raphael going after the um, power cell that Leatherhead was kind of protecting that like he stole from the Krang when he escaped. And I like the way the whole plot kind of just linked together throughout the whole thing. Uh, I suppose on that side plot, uh, for right up for now, uh, that, that was cool. That was where we saw most of the fighting of the episode, kind of in that side plot, as it moved into the end of the episode, when they all came back together. Um, the the fact that they all get in the soap car at the end of the episode, uh, and then they kind of like um, use that to kind of get away, very much kind of foreshadowed um, the kind of uh, basically the turtle's van or whatever it's going to be called. I think it's like the battle shell or the shell razor. I keep forgetting what it's called in this series. They haven't introduced it yet. But it definitely kind of foreshadowed that they now have this kind of um, sub car and they're probably going to, Dante is going to change it into their kind of battle shell. That we see in the um, opening of the series um, every episode. So that's going to be cool. And... Definitely, there was this odd moment where they, obviously they powered the uh, cable car, subcar by the uh, power cell. And it seemed like they were going to transport themselves to Dimension X until their brakes were pulled, which was um, really cool. There was this kind of uh, kind of Willy Wonka esque moment in the kind of tunnel when they were like, it's everything going pink and crazy. <laughs> like, they appeared to be getting transported to Dimension X until they slowed down. So that's an interesting moment that they're probably going to touch upon later on. It's an interesting thing to note. Um, some other po points I have. Uh, Splinter, uh, obviously we, see, we saw him kind of fight full on for the first time pretty much in the series. As opposed to just doing one or two moves on the turtles. That was really cool. And uh, the fight was, uh, th his fighting style was interesting. That He very much used the fact that um, Leatherhead was kind of brutish kind of style. He just was all about power. Splinter used that used that against him and there was cool. I suppose my problem with the fight was that it was a tad unrealistic the way he basically <laughs> Splinter was absolutely throwing Leatherhead around the place. I could get like a few of the moves where he was definitely using like Leatherhead's weight and kind of uh, momentum against him but a lot of the times he's just grabbing his finger and like dragging him completely around in the circle. It was a bit unrealistic but and I, the only reason I kind of even mention that is because the fighting is fairly realistic and like to the point in this show and this one just seemed a bit odd compared to that. Um, we had some interesting like advice from Splinter in this episode uh, making a, like a Mikey out to be correct but at the same time not kind of trusting Leatherhead so much because he does have that kind of wild side to him. The whole the line um, I'm compassionate not insane for like you have to you can keep him here but you have to keep him kind of chained up until we can figure something out. Um, then um, final two points are just the first one is Space Heroes obviously again it didn't quite I suppose foreshadow the events of the actual episode here but there was definitely kind of touched upon the whole thing of like um, 
I believe Captain Ryan was his name, um, said like, um, if there's one thing I'm known for, it's my humanity, as he kind of let the uh, kind of creatures uh, go out the airlock. That was hilarious. I suppose that it was touching upon humanity and the fact that Mikey had the most kind of humanity of the, the turtles. The fact that, um, like, Leatherhead and the Wake on the so Autumn Time, sacrificing himself, sort of stuff like that. He had to stretch a bit more space, space Heroes to fit into this episode, but it still works, I think. And then, I suppose the only kind of, like, odd moment, kind of negative maybe about the episode would be the, just the fact that um, we've seen the Krang in a lot of episodes, the turtles fighting them. We're still not quite sure what their whole story is about, what exactly they're doing. Um, I just think if they keep stretching it out so, so long without kind of adding to the plot what's going on, keep adding stuff on, it's going to get a bit kind of repetitive and I think they need to really start getting into more of what the crying and their whole story is about there and that's in that kind of part of the series and um, what the whole crying are about. Um, if you, if they keep if the, if there's a few more episodes where they kind of just fight the crying, they're looking for something and there's no advancement there, it'll get a, a, a bit annoying I think so uh, I'll be kind of on the lookout for that in the next few episodes. But overall, as I said, really good episode. The Leatherhead, Mikey Dynamic really was the star of the episode. And again, definitely lo loved it. Um, I haven't seen the previews for the next episode yet or know if they're out. So uh, I have no idea if, if the episode, next episode is going to be a continuation of this one. It definitely from the ending looked like there was some continuation to come next, but I'm not sure about that. But anyway, that's been my review of episode 12. It came from the depths. Uh, thank you for listening, and bye. Watching.